Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. This is your special edition, special holiday edition here uh, coming up this week. It is the Christmas week, and um, you guys are going to have some extra time over the holidays, avoiding your families and watching pro wrestling on your phone. Let's be honest about this. So we wanted to help you out a little bit. Uh, WWE Network, uh, we live on this thing. You you know we do. We have shows based on programs that are on WWE Network, you know, mm-hmm. with wrap-ups and midweek, midweek wars and, and things like that, right? And um, and, and I wanted to get the guys together and just kind of talk about, you know, it's been uh, almost two years coming up here in February of WWE Network. What are, what are the things you're diving into? What are the things you're really liking about it? Um, not to make this a, a commercial for WWE Network, more of a, a guide, because if you're listening to a podcast, if you're listening to a podcast about pro wrestling that doesn't have Stone Cold on it, then you're probably a big wrestling fan and you probably already have WWE Network or somebody else's login account. Um, so, uh, I, so I want to go through and, and just kind of talk about things like that. Uh, let's, uh, first of all, uh, I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Of course, with us from Poughkeepsie, New York, is Mad Mike. Sorg, you forgot to mention the man single-handedly responsible for bringing the network <laughs> to you. Yes, yeah, so of course he is and the by expert. that I mean I was part of a very large team. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and and did wasn't wasn't one of the resolutions for twenty sixteen for you to stop reminding us? <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Hey, hey it's it's story. Story. No, no, it's yo, get it in. No, get it in. I was get gonna it say in. he has a few more days. Like, I absolutely do. Like you know how you have those those little urges that you have to do before the before the year ends? You that's you, that's what that's what Mad Mike is doing. He has to it, mention it. Yeah, it's instantly. Okay. Then a purge. Guess yeah. better, better start eating all those marshmallows then. By the way, you know the first thing I'm saying in 2016. Is that oh, yeah, you work for WWE. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I'm saying. We might say it for you, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I know. <laughs> yeah, no, but uh, the network is fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. glad I was able to be a small part of it. You, 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 nobody can take that away from you. You nope. can stop reminding us, but you, we can't take that away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Vince McMahon will find a way, though. <laughs> if anybody will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get written out of the history books. I'll get taken off the <laughs> website. <laughs> he'll be Ben Watt. Yeah. Mike, be, man. No, no, maybe, maybe he'll be Hulk Hogan. Be some more or less, severe le- less uh, punishment for that. What is the family erase? My apology, you read. Sorry, I didn't say brother, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, brother. Dude. Also with us, you heard him there, Bobby F. J. Town from Johnstown, PA, joining us. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Mm-hmm. Ready to talk some WWE Network. Uh, it's only nine ninety nine. Did you know that? Oh. I, I, I have a feeling they didn't tell us that, that enough. It's free for the first month, too. Oh, it's free for the first month, yeah, if you sign up. I, I love so. that we're getting to the point where they just drop that every once in a while now. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like, but when it does, like, it's a pop. You know? Yeah, yeah $9.99. Said you know? the thing. I mean, I mean, they they really needed to lower it a little bit after they had a song yeah. for a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. Also with us from the greater Pittsburgh area, uh, from a sexy new camera that do we yes, have, so yes, his head fills it. Uh, I, had to, I had to wait. I had to wait so long to get this camera. I just realized what I put you through to get that camera. I yeah, am so yeah. sorry. You didn't have to do something the next day, did you? No, I did not. Poor Riz. I'm like. Hey, you're coming in the studio. I want you to have a camera instead of waiting for me to send it to you. Uh, but hey, wait, wait till, until the STDs come in. Wait till the end of the night leave. and take one of the cameras from the studio so you have one. Oh. Um, and but what what that camera probably has on on file almost would probably destroy it. Uh, I had I had to d- dip it in like alcohol to get rid of those. <laughs> The memories. The memories. The memories are still spread all over. I have. I'm like coming down. Like, why do I have flarp noise putty? 
the, the, the sexy talented dudes on indie indie rest indie mayhem show uh 100 gave me presents i have minions now i have little minions right there you have, you have um, a very special toy sort. i i have uh, uh what are what are these things these these punch critter blow up dolls like, yes. look at those things no i don't have a butt plug but i do no, have something else this it's a unicorn horn, guys. Yes, see? It's, it's exactly so what it is. It's a vibrating unicorn horn. It's a unicorn horn. Sorg, I told you, fuck plugs. Mm. Sorg, don't put that on your head, please. I did. Okay. Don't you dare be sour. Oh, man. Don't put anything in your mouth. I still, um, I still don't know why that's broken. I don't, is it? No, I think it's supposed to come that way. Like it's like, <laughs> like I don't think crazy. No, okay, no, no. Somebody so worked on this. Work. I, I should not. I need to wash my hands and everything. Uh, okay, WWE Network. Sanitize that studio. Yeah. Sanitize the whole studio. By the way, thanks a lot. Behind me, I wanted to bring it over here. Uh, unfortunately, the letters didn't last the rest of the night. I know, like I, I know, I, like I'm watching the video, and I'm just like the letters are like going away throughout the night as they're as people are over there. Uh, but thank you, uh, the Mayhem Tree. Wonderful by by Jen Carlin's some mayhem show craft work right there. Thank you so much for that. Uh, all right, let's get into it. So let's go around the WB network. Um, um, so first of all, let's let's go with what is the greatest thing you have seen on the WWE network since its inception? Ooh. Mike, um, I'm gonna say table for three. Oh, I know I'm yes. probably stealing yeah. a lot of people's answers. Uh, table for three is, it's just fun. It's like a really good wrestling, a wrestler podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's, it's like the best parts of the Jericho one, the awesome one and like Colt Cabanas. Without the Cialis commercials. Yeah. Without, yeah. Without, without being set, without being told, Hey, we need to sign up for DDP yoga. We get it. Wrestling yeah. fans are overweight. I gotcha. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, table for three is just a lot of fun. Like it's it's unfiltered discussion and everything like that. Um, and, and they put together some really interesting panels. And plus, it's probably the last thing that uh, Roddy Piper was ever recorded doing for WWE. So, oh, yeah. so yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff that's on there. It's really good, especially the New Day one. The New Day one is funny as hell. I mean, oh, yeah. shocker, but well, you know, and, and I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, and overall, one of the greatest thing on, on WWE Network is the frankness that happens uh, between the table for threes, the WWE sixties, the sixties, thirties, whatever, the, or twenty four sevens. What are they calling 24, them? Twenty four seven. Twenty four seven. Yeah, the the WWE twenty fours. Um, you know the the you know just seeing that world, and, and they're also not dancing mm -hmm. around things. Like it's very much like, yeah, I don't know why we booked it that way. You know, like something like that. Like it feels like a shoot interview, but it's not a shitty shoot interview. You know, it's it's not it's a little cleaner than the podcast, but they're letting them say all these things. You know, even in something like the WWE list, where it's very much a VH1 show, right? Um, yeah, like I haven't. They, they let them be out of character. Oh which yeah, is, which I like. And we also get to see the dining habits of Pritico Superstars, <laughs> yeah, like uh, Neville. Like, a, like Neville, say, like, Neville, what's with the apple? apple? You know, I, yeah, that was, that was good. That apple. Well, again, um, so frank, so great. What's that, Bobby? Um, that's why I'm kind of excited for the road trip one, mm -hmm. car, the car oh. trip one, mm -hmm. because I, I think it's going to be similar, but just like more uh, road trip stories and stuff like that. Well, honestly, they piloted. I'm convinced. Yeah, I'm, the Total I'm Divas episode. The Total Divas episode was a soft pilot for this. For this yeah. And then the Breaking I'm Ground totally one. I'm convinced of that. I mean, considering that's basically the footage they used. Um, yeah. I, I think it, it is. Because, I, I mean, we've talked about this before. Like, the idea that, okay, they go to Raw. They're not just doing Raw. That's where they filmed Superstar Inc. That's where they filmed uh, Table for Three at some venue lo nearby or in the building if they can facilitate it. Uh, 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 Swerved was filmed around all these shows. Like they're like how um, how how efficient they are 
that they're just packing all this in. Great time to be, to, to be somebody looking for video work, I think, because they're probably hiring a buttload of extra people. Be like, okay, uh, go film stuff over here. We can use it for this, this, and this. And also what the plan is. Like, what is, what is the production plan of, okay, we have these documentary things and DVDs we're working on, so make sure we're getting more footage of Jerry Lawler and Sting and Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. And, 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 and while you're at it, oh, oh Paige is going to do prank stuff over here. Like, you got the Jackass team you know, backstage doing stuff too, you know, it just, I think that's that on a production standpoint, I'm impressed, highly impressed with all that, that they're pulling all that out. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, I'm more impressed with the guys that can dodge every single one of those cameras. Oh, it's gotta be hard. It's gotta be so hard. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think we've all heard the story that there are guys who will just walk around naked to avoid being on the cameras <laughs> because right. they obviously cannot show that. Right, 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 right. Which I, I guess, I guess you know, I, I, I think it would kind of suck to a certain point to be a wrestler and be like, really, I, I don't want all of this. I, I don't, I don't want all of this out there, you know. Even though they completely, you know, or, or, or like Titus, who is the smartest guy that gets himself on Total Divas and gets more stuff. That's a guy that gets it, right? Hashtag Total Titus. Total Titus, yeah. Where's, where's his reality show? It could be coming. You know, no, it's coming. I mean, I, and I think I think that's also a you know we talked about before about how Santino has a spot on the show. Like, there's people we never see on Raw, but they have a spot in the company because they can do all this other stuff or be dancing our truth on the interstitials. You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm. like, like, like it, it's an ecosystem of characters. It's not just about who's on Raw and who isn't anymore, right? It helps, but still, it's not the end all be all to be a part of that company anymore. So. All right, let's go back. Riz, what are your uh, what, what's what's the the best thing you've seen on the network since its inception? Um, just all of the old shows, like the old uh, AWAs, oh. NWA, Mid South, all those classic wrestling shows that. And I think I told you today, like I was watching uh, uh, the Mid South wrestling where they had Butch Reed. A, a, a really good Butch Reed uh, montage of him in a break, what was it? A uh, break dancing gym. Oh no! Mm-hmm. Oh no! That, that sounds accurate. Oh, it, no. it was so strange, but so that time period because he was like, it was him and two other skinny guys just dancing, <laughs> and well, two, the two guys were dancing. While he was working out, um, but just that, just having that history of where this place has, where W, where where the wrestling has been in the past, it just seems like a good thing to watch a lot. Uh, and I know, I know, we see now that some of the moves now are just like rest holds for another for, for this generation. But it was nice to see the, the tell a nice little story there. Yeah, I like I just like watching those old wrestling because uh, before it was always on like ESPN Classic, mm-hmm. and at twelve o'clock in the morning you had to stay up and watch it. Uh, I can just pull up WWE Network now and watch some AWA wrestling. Yeah, no, I, I you know, and I took I took a little bit of a dive into that as well. Uh, yeah, a little bit of the the oh what what was it the, the the GWF or whatever yeah, it is, USWA, like, yeah, global, global wrestling, and yeah, those are great because they're actually best of shows. Uh-huh. So you're seeing like like the the Doctor Tom Pritchard, who by the way sounds a lot like Roddy Piper. I never saw a lot of Doctor Tom uh, in character or anything like that. He's having a few with Jeff Jarrett on these things, and then like stunning mm-hmm. Steve Austin and the worst tights imaginable uh, is involved in some way as well, and just like going through that, and you are seeing best of best of best of, and again a lot of like. Like Doctor Tom's like always on commentary and then gets into it with somebody, right? Um, and then again, oh, what was the other one? What was the one with uh, Candido? Smoky Mountain. It was. It's. It's like thirty percent Jim Jim Cornette, and it's amazing. You know, just like how many it's teams? Like, it's, how, it's like Jim Cornette and Sonny, right? Or Tammy. Right. Tammy. Uh, but the thing Fitch. is, they'll they'll have they'll have a, a, a talk with Sonny, Tammy, um, Tammy Sitch, 
and then go back to another talk with Tammy Sitch about like the same situation. <laughs> I'm just like, wait, 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 wait. But, but I'm into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and the Jim Cornette thing. The Jim Cornette is like, like that wrestling promoter that has to come out and manage every bad guy on the show. But you're not annoyed up by it because it's Jim Cornette talking, right? He did it. Mm-hmm. He did individually. The first episode I watched, he did it. He did a promo in, with a long microphone that was really disturbing mm-hmm. in front of an old computer talking about yes. things uh, in front of the the guys that were in the WWF at the time. Um, the I think it was the Express, one of the Expresses, um, and that were coming back to get involved in a match, and uh, and like and like two other guys. It's just like what is happening here? And he, and then the part where they started showing the old NWA scaffold match. Like as a setup for this bringing in one of the road warriors, it, it was just like so random and so amazing. Um, I, I just highly, highly recommend it. So, uh, Bobby, what about you? Um, since Mike took my answer, I'm going to go with the obvious mm-hmm. uh, NXT and how I'm going to I'm going to marry breaking uh, ground into this too because uh, we like I would I would I appreciate uh, breaking ground. And vice versa, I appreciate NXT more because of they both have this cohesive, you know, they gel well together. Mm-hmm. Like you learn more about wrestlers on breaking ground because of their training and stuff like that. And you, you get to see that in action on NXT. Um, it, it's like seeing the making of a movie. Yeah, yeah. And like I, I learned to appreciate Dana Brooke. And like I've said on, on the podcast before, God love him, Mojo. I hated Mojo before this. Now with him on Breaking Ground, like I, I saw him as a person <laughs> instead of just a terrible wrestler. He's still a terrible wrestler. <laughs> he's, not, he's not that great of a wrestler, but like the person Mojo is actually a lot more colorful now. Mm-hmm. So, um, and just the NXT Takeover specials have been amazing all year. Um, Sasha and Bailey. I, I still think Sasha and Bailey might be my match of the year. Mm. Uh, I would say the 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 first one. So so I want to agree with uh, you. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, Sorg. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Sorg. Oh well, were you on the same same thread? Because I was going to go somewhere else. I know. I was going to. I was going to. Uh, I, I would have said what Bobby said if I didn't see the Samoa Joe uh, Baylor match. Mm-hmm. Yes, but. I can, I can see where they're going with that one, but go ahead, Sork. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I, I now I, I forgot what I was going to say, but anyways, <laughs> no, no. Hey, yeah, yeah, we, we got to remember that this is the this is the reason NXT is a thing, right? I, mm-hmm. I, I still think I've, I've said this a couple times on the show that a promotion that is not widely seen outside of you paying nine ninety nine for a wrestling thing, or maybe over on 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 uh, Hulu, I guess, or international markets. It's not on TV in America, at <clears> least. <throat> and they filled 15,000 people in that arena. And I don't know how entirely uh, 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 London sees it. I don't know if it's on a local. Maybe it's on Sky Sports, actually. I know it used to be, like, before we even got to see it here, when it was still local in Florida, uh, for, like, for the, you know, NXT Florida Championship Wrestling. But, man, like, that phenomenon. That, uh, hey, guess what? Couldn't get tickets yesterday. I also forgot about it at 10 o'clock. Um, oh, no. and, and at ten thirty-five, all I could get was one ticket for ninety dollars uh, when they when they're coming to town here at the end of January. Um, and even the tickets I've seen offered are like two hundred bucks for a pair for a glorified indie show, guys. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it is, it is. Yeah, I, I mean, know it is. It's got WWE behind it, but man, it's it's a, it's an indie show. Um, and, and I think they want to give it that feel too. Yeah, they don't want like to grow a, a it. High class indie show. I'm just like, man, come to Console Arena next time, right? And and they don't, or even just go to like AJ Palumbo, something like that, something a little bit bigger than Stage AE. They're not even well, going to sell out arenas. Like, they're, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're they're trying to force the scarcity, right, to make it well, special. I think they also want to go to the bigger arenas when they have a bigger show right, already in right. town. Like, so the audio or WrestleMania or SummerSlam right, or Survivor right. Series or something like that. If 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 I can't get a ticket to NXT here in Pittsburgh, I'm more willing to go to New York City and go to the Barclays Center. Right? Uh, Sorg, I, we can make that happen. I know we can make that happen, but I'm more <laughs> willing to do that, right? So yes. 
I mean, I mean, how many people maybe go to that Barclays Center for NXT and don't even bother to go to SummerSlam? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know? Hi, hi, there hi. you go, Matt right Mike, there, right here, Wrestling right there, Show. right there. That's but, what I did. But you live in the general area. I know you don't live in New York City anymore, but you live in the general area. I'm oh, talking so you about mean like going out of town. I'm talking about oh, like yes. I came. No, there from, were a lot of people who did yeah. that. I talked to a lot of people who were doing that. Like exactly. I, like I came from Pittsburgh. Or NXT, and I went back home and watched it for nine ninety nine for SummerSlam the next night <laughs> instead of going yeah. to the arena. I mean, I think that's that, I think there's a plenty of those. Again, I, it, it, it's it's forcing that scariest city, and they're like, well, if we can if we can fill these arenas, why don't we? You know, hey, hey, maybe I, at a certain point you'll see just Raw in smaller arenas here if they if the numbers keep doing what they're doing. I think the next uh, set of NXT tapings because they're going to a bigger arena in Florida. I think that'll be a telltale sign. Like if they can that sell is. that out, that is. they may start taking it to some larger arenas. It still should be a. It's still a smaller arena, isn't it? Like it's not like a twenty thousand seat arena or something, right? Yeah, no, but it's like it's definitely probably at least three times the capacity of full sale. Which is what like three thousand people, right? <laughs> but still, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it'd be like if they went to the Mid Hudson Civic Center. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but or you, probably like a place a little mm-hmm. bit bigger. Than that. I think that'd be great. I think that'd be great for them. I can see them not doing the house shows. I can see them still doing the house shows at the equivalent of the Johnstown Armory or something, right? Um, I mean, that's 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 fine. Um, they'll bring the ring this time, Bobby. I swear. <laughs> you, mean the, you mean the War Memorial? I, I don't know. I, yeah, you said Armory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I was like, close, close enough. That's close, basically yeah, the same thing. Yeah. Close enough. I'm trying. I'm trying to give you. I'm trying to give you. Give you some shouts out there, Bobby. They, they they lost the ring. They lost the ring for a house show for WWE. AKA they didn't sell enough tickets. Well, no, the <laughs> ring didn't make it because you guys didn't. You guys didn't spread enough fairy dust and 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 clap for the fairy and make the ring appear. You yeah. know, by I think they, I think they got mad at us last time because uh, the guy yelled at Razor Ramon. Don't just look. Or yelled at the referee. Don't just look at him. Help him when Razor Ramon got hurt. Against Shawn Michaels in a ladder match. I, I don't think that would have. <laughs> that's been, why they didn't that, that go back. Work, no. I don't think they, they. I don't think that's the reason. But <laughs> that's the that's next the reason. But the next that, time I see a ladder match or any kind of match, I'm just going to scream that. Don't just look at him. Oh, don't just help him. I, in fact, I want. I almost want to go to the Global Force show here and just scream that at every match. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, that happens a lot at the indie shows. That's for sure. Hey, um, hey, Sword, what are you happy about on the WWE Network? What am I happy about on the WWE Network that I am just excited every time it pops up, other than all the things you mentioned, like literally all the things you guys mentioned. So it's actually kind of hard for me to come up with one. But there is, you know what, 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 what I'm excited about? Um, can I just kind of lump a few together because they're kind of the same shows? Sure. Um, culture Shock and Unfiltered, like stuff you know, like that. I was, yeah. I was going to say. I almost said both of those. And I'm like, no, I'm gonna take the one everyone. Even wants Superstar Inc. is really cool. Like, like that they like. And again, this is what makes it kind of feel like a network that they're they're kind of going out and doing these other things. Um, even like the quick interviews. And, and again, like these these interview kind of things, like Table for Three and stuff. Like the Unfilter is like su- is such a microcosm of those because they're like a ten minute interview with these guys. But it's like Seth Rollins about his like cute little fluffy dog. You know what I mean? Like it's a diff- it's a different angle, and, and it's and and it's and it's and it's uh, Renee Young who's just freaking adorable to begin with with these guys, and and just completely disarms Wade Barrett. You know what I mean? Um, you know it's a little different. Oh, but also she, she has like there's a Force Awakens one on there. I haven't there watched is. it yet. There is. It's it's a lot of but tidbits. It's Renee Young talking to Harrison Ford for fuck's sake. I mean, come on. <laughs> There's Come like on. there's really like one soundbite from Harrison Ford. I, I there's just like that that's it. Like they, I don't think they got I, a lot out of him. Um, I'm okay with that, but still, Harrison Ford is notorious for like messing with people on media days, <laughs> and you can tell that they're like going to media days and just be like, "Hi, we're from WWE, and we're going to talk to you for the next ten minutes," you know, kind of thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, sure. Like I. A, Get off my. Lawn, and you can Harrison tell, Ford. but I also love seeing even when they're doing something like that. Like there's a Sandra Bullock movie that they did recently but you can tell like even like the force awakens ones like you can tell who the wrestling fans were oh yeah you know, at least got it a little bit like and i think i think that's really exciting it really kind of plays into the we want celebrities uh at wwe kind of aspect of things yeah well she, another, she they had Stephen amell on he yeah. was awesome oh naturally. yeah oh exactly oh I, didn't, another, I, I don't think i saw that another one. thing we forgot to mention uh i may throw in another one here three years ago we were watching a 60 70 pay-per-view 
Mm-hmm. We're getting it for nine ninety nine. We're Let's, getting it can, can everywhere. We, can we be honest? How many people were actually dropping the sixty or seventy dollars for those pay per views here? Right? Show I don't of hands. know what you're talking about. Show of hands. Show of hands. I think we. I think. I, I think statue of limitations. At all, Let's be honest. I watched it. I, I, I was. I watched it legally. I watched it, I watched it the next night in picture frames on RAW. <laughs> I, I, was, I was. I was. I dropped. I was, I was actually dropping money for the regular pay per view. Oh, there yeah. you go. There you go. We did for WrestleMania. I know. Uh, yeah, but, we, we did it for the big shows, well, but, but now we get every there's show a lot for of us. $9.99. There's a lot of us that don't. Now, and, and, and I don't, and I, I won't do it for a Ring of Honor. You know, I'd rather, I'd rather pay for a Ring of Honor, but then I just don't get around to it. Unfortunately, right. I feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad about that. Like, like I was getting all the. Hey, oh by the way, I got shouts uh, to new Ring of Honor tag team champions, uh, the War Machines, yeah. including. Friend of the Boy, show, Ray Sorg? Rowe. Yeah, Sorg. Oh, are we doing sports? It was you, a live you show. Tell, do you want to you want to tell us what happened in the Force Awakens? And, so since Han Solo's ki- no. Should we get a hairball? I dropped my minion. Excuse me. Oh, Luke, no, was went away. Luke was on Asgard the entire time. The entire was it, time. Was it the banana minion, Sorg? The banana. It was a banana minion. They're both banana minions. Actually, one just has a coat. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Next. What yes. is the word? Uh, I, I do. One before we move on, mm-hmm. if you guys haven't seen the culture shock with Corey Graves when he is at BronyCon, thank you. Oh, you need to watch it. It's good. It's freaking <laughs> it, good. By the way, friend of the show. I'm not even gonna spoil what happens. It you just have to watch. By it. the way, friend of the show, Corey Graves. He's course, been on the wrestling. The show tour, he's been on the wrestling show, wrestling mayhem show, like three times. I I wonder what he regrets doing more that BronyCon episode. Or the Mayhem Show. <laughs> oh, well, so one, time, tweet one time it so was we... with Butterbean. So this Hold is on. Let's airport. tweet him. Question from the show at Corey Graves. Okay, go on. Go on. But okay, so I mean, other than that, <laughs> can we talk about, like, uh, Mike, I remember a conversation with you early on on, 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 the show, on this show about the WWE Network. Yes. And I remember you being very, can I say, pained? That they weren't releasing as much content as you thought they should have been at the time. <laughs> you're like, you're right. like, everybody I, was. All the pay per views were out there for the most part, um, and you're like, why aren't there nitros? Why aren't there raws? Why is all this stuff not out there? Yeah. Uh, seeing the plan as it's unfolded in, in in the last almost two years, are you happier about what has been out there now? And again, you have seen more content than has been released. At this point, and obviously yeah. now we're getting Smoky Mountain. Now we're getting some of this stuff that you've been talking about, um, kind of on a slow rollout. How how do you feel about how that progress has been? Uh, it's been a, it's been a lot better. I still think all the raws should be out there. Mm-hmm. Personally, I, I feel like that's the easiest thing to do. Um, there. I mean, I understand why they're not. I know they're staggering it, but they haven't even gotten to like the old SmackDowns, apart from a couple random ones. Like, we haven't even gotten to the old SmackDown shows yet. And SmackDown sometimes was a lot better than Raw. But um, the things I want to see on there that I don't even know if they're ever going to put on there. Um, I want to see Texas Wrestling on there. Oh, Texas Wrestling from the 1950s mm-hmm. with, like, Luthez and Frank Gotch. It's fantastic. <laughs> it really like it takes you back to a time where people dressed up to go to a wrestling show. <laughs> like like people like they just came from church and then oh let's go see the boys fight in the ring. Like I witnessed the first ever power bomb, and it's because Luthez fucked up a pile driver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Like like we were watching it, we all started chanting at the monitor, "You fucked up." You fucked up. To Lou Fez. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I want to see on there, and I don't know if they're ever going to put it on there because of WWE's hesitance to acknowledge their own history. Right. I want to see the old OVW shows on there. Ooh. Well, here's, do they own it? Oh, yeah. They, own oh, they got it now. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, we talk, no, oh, we talked about this the before. Thing, Sorg, yeah. The reason I want to see it, I didn't come into the um, digitization, digitization program, which is what they called it at the time. Mm-hmm. I didn't come into the program until a couple months after it started. I missed all of the old OVW shows. 
So Prototype, oh. Leviathan, CM Punk, Brent Albright. Mm-hmm. I missed all of that oh, stuff. Brent Albright was I in that stuff? I never got to see it. Man. I so- never got to see any of it. And that's all the guys were talking about when I first got in there. So I'm like, fuck, the one thing I really, really wanted to see. Like, mm. And I, I need that on the network. Remind like, me. Remind me, man. I, ha- I do have a DVD of OVW stuff. It was like a before it was a before they were stars thing. And, mm-hmm. and that's why I asked because it was definitely not put out by WWE. Had Jim, I think Jim Cornette owned it or something at the time. He must have sold it yeah. to WWE. Um, because even though it was developmental, WWE didn't own OVW. No, but they they owned the uh, the catalog from the stuff. Yeah, I think they they bought. That. Well, while while they were the developmental facility for yeah. WWE, the catalog was theirs. The company wasn't. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Because even, they, because they had the rights to use all that footage for like OVW for, is still in like. existence. Actually, uh, Dylan Bostic, Ray Liner from OVW. Um, yeah, they, they so, were almost um, like the TNA developmental. Yeah, uh, well, they were for a bit. I don't think they are they anymore. Were, yeah. uh, Joe yeah. Rosa uh, in, in in IWC also is from OVW. I think was training, like actually training other people at OVW for a bit. Because I, I, I know he's, I think he's becoming a big part of the uh, uh, Iron City Wrestling Academy now. So, you know, there's that. Um, so, I, I don't know. I think... Um, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Since there's such a golden age, Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar and uh, Shelton Benjamin as the Minnesota Wrecking Crew. Remind me, Mike. Yeah. I, I have. Remind me, Mike, to kick you that DVD um, okay. after the show, okay? Because it, it's worth checking out. Because there's at least a match of each of those in that DVD. Oh yeah. Um, oh, and sure, it's, but... and it's 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 amazing. It is. It's so great. I, I want to go back and watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, after the show, remind me of that. I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up with that. Uh, okay. But um, but no, real, real, real good stuff. Wow, wow. Um, what tangent were we on? Uh, but no, that, no, that's no, good. like so, what, what I want to see, like if right, I'm happy with the rollout. Right, if you're so. happy with the rollout stuff, and, but you see what they're doing. Like they, you can't just be like, here's everything. Like oh, they got the stuff from this year of ECW. I'm completely going to watch through all that because. But see, you, the thing is, I feel like they should have done everything because if they're all if they're always coming out of new content, mm-hmm. you know, because it's not like they promote on the net on on like Raw that hey, you guys, you can watch Smoky Mountain Wrestling like. No, they're they not. Do no, they're not. That's amongst our crews. That's amongst the diehard that are looking at the network, and we're doing the job <laughs> for them by going on but, our show and say, "Oh, Smoky Mountain Wrestling." And then what did all of us do? I didn't even know. I went and looked up Smoky Mountain Wrestling and started watching it. Right? Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's not a thing that, that it's going to pull a lot of numbers from. And I think they found a lot of the old stuff. There's not a lot happening. But it OVW was, is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. OVW is like, hey kids, you like John Cena? You want to see John Cena wrestle before he was John Cena? <laughs> <laughs> that would that would get a lot of views. That would or that would Randy Orton. Views. Or hey guys, do you miss Randy Orton? No. <laughs> um, if you do, you can go check out OVW. Hey kids, do you like Brock Lesnar? Do you want to see a younger and somehow looks exactly the same Brock Lesnar? Look that's true. That. That's true. And they have so many guys on there. Like they can have Marvel put out stuff about Leviathan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, they can have Marvel do a Drax versus Leviathan like fantasy <laughs> battle. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, Riz, Riz, you got something yeah, to say? I, in the way you were talking about that, the only thing I can think of that was just like that was um, one of the the earlier ones have. The entire catalog right now from the Rockers and another one had the Thrill Seekers with Jericho. Yeah. You can see like all the thrill seekers. All of their all of their uh, programming had at least one of those guys in the ring. And that was it. Mm-hmm. I mean it, it had Shawn Michaels in the first in the first episode, and then all of a sudden they were tag team champions in the last episode. <laughs> so, you know, it, it was one of those things where it's like, hey, you guys like Shawn Michaels. Here's how he was before he was, you know, HBK. Yeah. And, and I'm kind of I'm kind of upset that. Correction, HB Shizzle. Yes. Whatever. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of upset. At, at, I don't know who I'm supposed to be upset at. Either WWE or Brett or Owen or whoever, mm-hmm. but or Owen's wife, whoever. But they took down Stampede Wrestling. That's Brett. That's Brett. Yeah. 
Yeah, he owns I, the he owns his own matches. So yeah, I mean, I I watched the first episode and I'm like, I want to watch more of this, and then all of a sudden they take it down. Yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, Riz, Riz, spoiler alert. Um, Stampede gets really old. And I kind of figured that. Yeah, and, well, you um, still want you still want to see it, regardless. Especially the announcing. You you still want to see it? You still want to dive in? Yeah, it's like who can I, I find I wanna, on you know, here? I want to live it for some reason. I'm sure. I'm sure there's some crap in OVW. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. All the guys that it, didn't make it. Sorry, there's crap everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's shit crap everywhere. everywhere. The um, Smoky Mountain, uh, Global, uh, AWA, mm-hmm. I think this, Attitude this, Era, this, Attitude Era. There's crap everywhere. Now, so I so the Smoky Mountain Wrestling Champion was Dirty White Boy at one point. Uh, yes, it yep. is. Yes, it is. I think it was T.O. Opera in WWE. The Dirty mm-hmm. White Wow. <laughs> um from the chat, we have somebody in the chat on this Saturday oh, wow. afternoon. By the way, well, he's he's supposed to be on the next show after this. So, oh. uh, Mr. Garza, Antonio Garza, says as someone who doesn't have the network, I really appreciate that they have the old Legends of uh, Legends table to watch over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's uh, that was a big thing for me because uh, Mike, every time because I know you had WWE twenty four seven, and mm-hmm. that wasn't always an exciting thing for me was to watch one or two of those episodes whenever I came up to visit you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, you know, and, and even like they released DVDs of these, like the Heat Seekers ones, like the ones that were like, here's one about like, 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 but in a war. Rod- no, 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 like, like Roddy Piper. No, I'm just talking about the Legends table. So, yeah, I know. So am I. But, but oh, the oh, yeah, that's right. Bischoff they did, they did. and Kevin Nash on it. Yeah. Like Ed Bischoff, Kevin Nash, and Mick Foley. Yeah, just like that that thing of if you haven't seen these the the, the Legends Roundtables, it's like just the guys like maybe about four of them, five of them, depending. Uh, mostly his hosted by Jim Ross, I think. Mostly sometimes by Mean Gene. Sometimes by really Mean drunk. Gene. Depends on what year it was. Uh, almost none of them are in HD, and, uh, and, and but they they they're sitting around. Some of them smoking stogies and and drinking drinking whiskey and just reminiscing about the good old days. The thing that's become, uh, I think, uh, the the. You know, the legends, the light, I'm sorry, the table for three, you know, just, you know, yeah. without that smoke and stogies thing. Cause I think that's, that's great for the eighties guys, but I don't think that that's Michael so great Hayes for now. always has a cigar. In his Michael mouth. Hayes, Michael Hayes is the star of that show and the running gag of him not being in the hall of fame, which uh-huh. still hasn't come to pass by the way. Um, I, which I think is now just entirely a rib on him. No, I, a sword, if they don't do it in Texas, that's true. They have to. If they don't do it in Texas, they're never going to do it. And I hope, I hope the intro package to his induction on Raw the weeks leading up is a super, a super cut of all of those times and the jokes of about him being in the Hall of Fame from the Legends Roundtable, like rolling <laughs> into every time they call him WWE Legend, like what PSA is, <laughs> as opposed to WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> right, right. Like that. That just completely should be it. All right, real quick, I, uh, we're, we want this to be a shorter episode, just a bite-sized thing for you guys here over the holidays. Uh, so we, I think we gave you guys an idea. If you're new to the network, if you're looking for something you haven't yet, um, uh, you know, for me, I was exploring a lot of like WCW pay-per-views I had seen and had not seen because I just hadn't. I can't swallow ECW pay-per-views because of what they've done to a lot of the, a lot of the music on there. Um, I don't know if anybody else has that problem as well. Although watching ECW Hardcore TV is a lot of fun sometimes. Just seeing, uh, just seeing Joey, Joey Styles and the big, big thick glasses and these mm-hmm. the giant ball of, like the giant microphone ball on his microphone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, even yeah. I, I, well, I watched. You were talking about Joel Gertner when he said giant ball. Oh no no no! So no, so no, no. so you know how like ECW Hardcore TV like the camera keeps moving in and out from him as he's talking about something when mm-hmm. it's just Joey Styles. So I got I got stuck with just um um friend of the show um. Uh, uh, Burt Legrand with uh, RWA doing a wrap up um, a couple months ago. So I did that style to him, like a little more <laughs> subtle than what they did. But I was just like, I had just watched it. And I was like, I'm going to do, I'm like, dude, I'm just completely going to do Joey Styles with you right now, you know, because it was him. There was no other co host or anything like that. So I'm like, I got to make this interesting with one guy talking about wrestling for five minutes, right? So here we Especially go. Especially when you're recording in someone's basement and you can't move the camera. Right? <laughs> That's good too. Okay. I wasn't <laughs> in somebody's basement. I was in the entrance way after the show. Well, but... no, I, I'm saying they were. Yes, they were. They they were in Paul Heyman's mother's basement. Yep, <laughs> yep. Recording that, which makes me you know, when somebody's like you know, uh, what are you in your mom's basement? And I was like, listen, man, ECW came from Heyman's mom's basement, and Jay Z records in his basement. Exactly. 
was like, dude, like, listen, I got a tree in my basement. Back off, okay? Pee Wee's Herman, Pee Wee Herman's bike was taken to the basement of the Alamo. Right. Like, yes. Spoil- I just wanted to spoilers. Tie that basement thing. Thanks. Ooh. Spoilers. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Seriously, Bobby. How long ago did that movie come out? Han Solo oh, took Han, immaterial. Han Solo on, took Pee Wee Pee Wee's bike to the basement of the Alamo. <laughs> William Falcon. William Falcon. William Falcon. He called it, and he Falcon. called it the William Falcon. He's senile. Um. Anyways. Okay. Real quick. Real quick. What is the worst or most ridiculous thing you have seen on the network? And don't say our truth dancing after that really sad pay per view. <laughs> Dang. That was gonna be my guess. That's the, that. That is off the table. That's obvious. Um, I don't know. This is you had to be there. What what show was it? Something really horrible happened. Really um, sad, really scary. Right. Something with the Wyatts, right? All right, no, I'm I'm gonna say this. Hmm. I, I don't think it's gonna be a popular answer. Huh. I'm gonna say Legends House. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no wow. Legends, Legends House. House. Let 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 Mike finish on this one, please. Legends House was not designed for the network. No, no it wasn't. Yeah, it was uh, absolutely it was not. It was designed for TBS or E Network yeah. or something like that. And and th- it was. It's like the parts where they're just hanging out is the best part. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The part where it where they have to do like yeah like, like, like jazzercise <laughs> yeah that was bad or just uh, or the part where Mean Gene randomly hits on every single woman that shows up on camera. That's great. What who's, every single what is woman. happening? What is what is this? Why is it beeping, oh, Bobby? Sorry. That's your dryer again. <laughs> yeah, but Bo- Bobby's dryer is an R two unit. We figured this out. Is show. your dryer right um, beside your computer in your room? What's going on? Spoiler alert! Guys. Yeah, and and it, oh, sorry about the waterfall sound earlier. That, that was the that was the washer. <laughs> what is happening in there? Anyway, sorry, Mike. Yeah, but Legends House, like it was, it was the first try that they did for original programming. Even though it wasn't developed for the network, I think if it was developed with the network in mind. Uh, it would have been a little bit more of a freeform story mm-hmm. than just, hey, the legends are doing something wacky this week. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, that's my Michael Hayes impression. That was actually a pretty good Michael Michael Hayes. Thank you. Whoa, I'm not in the Hall of Fame, but hi, Rosa Mendes. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Riz, wow. what, what's the worst thing you've seen, Riz? <laughs> um, was it that? <laughs> Was it that impression that yes, just happened? Yes, that was that. Um, but no, what the one thing we actually did mention here, I think it was somebody that somebody said was good. Um, I didn't like Swerved or Too Hot for TV. Uh, yeah, or they were too rough. hot for WWE. They were whatever a little rough. Was. I don't those for me. <laughs> I'm sorry, but but I just don't I don't get it. Like I don't I. It's like you, you can tell that they were just just like Legends House was. You can tell they were pre-planned out sometimes Mm -hmm. they were too thought after because ever notice the only times like all swerved had was somebody from the new day (laughs) pranking another guy from the new day and that was it and uh, that's not true. Dolph Ziggler was involved in a lot of the stuff too. He was, he was like you you at least one time per episode. It was a new day pranking a new day member. But, you know what my favorite part of Swerved was? The part before the prank. Like, like if someone's if someone's coming in to do an interview and they're just gonna play fart noises over it, like, like you just see like Zach Ryder going in and they're like, "All right, Zach, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hit the local markets." Like, I love the pre-production setup because they have to make it seem like the real job. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just think that stuff is kind of interesting. You, 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 don't get you get a glimpse. That. You get a glimpse of the behind the scenes, right? You're like, yeah, you don't, you, know. you, you never get, you always see the finished product. You're never like, all right, so uh, we're going to have you guys talking Spanish. We're going, as you know, we're going to the Mexico tour. So uh, we just have a few lines here. We're going to have you read them. And, and that's probably what they do. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, that stuff is kind of cool. And then of course, the shittiness of the pranks sometimes come in, but but the the pre prank stuff is pretty can we fun. can we just get a show of them like doing like just follow like here are the, all the things you do on a day of raw, you know yeah. like and that's it honestly the pranks were there out in public, and it was an actor messing with them 
Those were the best ones. That was good. But the, those were the best ones. Like the one in the coffee house with Heath Slater? Mm-hmm. Come on. Mm-hmm. That was really good. See, those were good, but the ones like in 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 the actual arena. Mm-hmm. Basically with, anything that involved Hornswoggle. Let's 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 keep it yes. real. Anything that involved Hornswoggle was horrible. A lot of setup, especially like that that the the cooking one, you know. Uh I want to see some of those cooking shows. <laughs> I would love to see cooking with Booker T. Right. Right, because exactly. Because he might bring back yeah, cook, Cooker T. Cooker, 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 cooker T. Wow. He might bring back his catchphrase of a whole lot of food man love. <laughs> it better <laughs> like it better start with. I hope direction. they buy the footage for the Hungry Man commercial. Uh, it really should. And just intersperse it with his feud with Austin in the grocery store. Mm-hmm. Just make that the intro to the cooking show. Bobby of J-Town, what's the worst thing you've seen on WWE Network? I'm going to go with the other thing that Riss said, uh, Jerry Springer, Too Hot for TV. Um, <laughs> I watched rough. one of the episodes, and it was the one that referenced JR's uh, surgery of his <laughs> butt or ass, uh, as it, uh, if you were. Um, and it was awful. And there's a reason it was that too stuff, for TV, Bob. There's a reason that stuff happened in the '90s because we didn't know any better. It makes you appreciate wrestling today, doesn't it? Like, yes, really. It does. This is not. We also does. didn't have YouTube. And, yeah, and yeah. for Jerry Springer to still be around, <laughs> his show, his show's still on the air. Yeah, How? it is. Yeah, it is. How he's got an empire, Bobby, man. Do you, Bobby, do you realize how little it takes to produce that show? I know, mm-hmm. but still. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it, it just boggles my mind. Did you but know? Yeah, I think that's as, the worst uh, thing. Colt Cabana, uh, uh, our Colt Cabana podcast this week, Abyss, discussing how one of his early jobs was being the guy that sat on the phone when they said, "Is your is your husband cheating on you? Please call Jerry Springer today." <laughs> and, and he's the guy that had to receive all the all the all the inquiries. That's wow. probably why he has a split personality. Then that's right. what happened to him. That's what happened to him. Also, name dropped uh, IWC. Um, apparently he remembers the last two promoters of IWC, not the current one that he met. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, whoops, that'll get you booked. Um, anyways, uh, okay. So the worst thing, uh, I guess generally about WWE for me is I kind of like the idea. So I don't, so I, I'm a cord cutter, right? Sometimes you just want to put something on TV, right? Like, like back in the day when I had cable and, and I, I, I don't want to put it on the network channels cause it's usually in the news or something that's depressing or soap operas or something. Or there's a religious channel that's out of Pittsburgh. Um, or news about the soap operas. Or news about the religious soap operas. Um, but I just like kind of like seeing what does the network have on today. You know, sometimes there'll be an old WCW pay per view. Be like, okay, I'll, I'll kick this on for a bit. You know, um, but unfortunately, um, at least I'd say like seventy five percent of the time, if I just go hit play on the network, it's the cops of the WWE network, Total Divas. Oh, yeah. Sword. That or that one beyond the mat with John Cena over and over and over again. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, today, today was today was Triple H. Triple H. Yeah. Today was Triple H. So I mean, but but that, that, that's the thing. But it is like Total Divas is really hot right now. Like, yeah, on E, keep it out of my network. You know what I mean? It's like it's, you you have it on demand. That's fine. But I, I don't know. I don't know if they're crossing that over. I don't know if that works for them. But uh, but but no. I just like. I would like to see more wrestling on my wrestling network, I guess. Is that weird? I know, uh, you know, I, I even like give me more countdowns and W lists and stuff like that. Like, I'm OK with that. You know, yeah, this, but so you have to remember they have to produce those. They don't have to produce yeah. Soul Divas. That's all. Right, right, right. But, but and it is no, in HD and showing, it looks pretty. That's true, too. The stuff that's in HD. The pretty like, girls. Old pretty. pay-per-views, stuff like that. It just it's just one of those things. It's just hard on a on a tuesday afternoon when you when you flip this thing on you know but i guess although i guess that fits because the people that flip on the tv on a on a tuesday afternoon are not so much guys like me it's like the moms you know They're what people i mean watching like, soap opera people sword, watching which soap is what total divas is that's like, true that's gotta true. watch my stories that's true gotta watch my stories gotta see what nikki's up to today Let's yep. see what Natty's upset about today. I'm going to flip on the old network. Oh, Spoiler Grandma alert, Natty. It's her cat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> guys, it's been a lot of fun with you uh, talking to the WWE Network. I hope you guys have a great holiday here. I hope, you too, uh, sure. yeah, you hope you, you spend too, some time. Sure. Thank you again, Jen Carlin, for this wonderful sure. mayhem tree behind me. Uh, at Sogertron on the Twitters. At Mad Mike 4883 Yes. He does stuff. 
midweek war. And, and we, we will have some special midweek war stuff coming hopefully next week. Oh, go check it out. Also, Bobby F. J. Town from Johnstown, PA. Insert coin to begin.com. Boss battle. All kinds of fun stuff. Merry Christmas. Riz at the E. Riz. Riz plays games on the Twitter and the YouTubes as well as insert coin to begin.com. Insert coin to begin.com has a uh, Riz rant. Just pointing it out there. Go get the Riz rant. Riz rant. Whenever you hear this, it'll still be up there because it's the internet. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Let us know what you think about uh, our WWE picks at Mayhem Show on the Twitters. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everybody, supporting us on our Patreon. I know I didn't do the Patreon things. We, this will not be included in your Patreon as a pay thing. This is our gift you to you. You will not get a gold. Uh, well, well we're Wait. still waiting for gifts to come in. So they may still get yes. more golds because uh, I know uh, LBs came in. We put that up, uh, and uh, we're waiting uh, one ones for. I, I Eamon, need to watch that. Amen and somehow. Dutters, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, Mike, you got it forwarded to you. It was a YouTube link uh, earlier this this week, I think. Okay, so, right. I, so I, I, I will have to check that out. Go look for the YouTube links. Um, okay. And thank you. Also, thank you randomly. Uh, thank you, Mike, for defending the Mayhem Show on the YouTube comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody reads them. Mm-hmm. Somebody's out there. I do like Jim Cornette professionally. I do. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I, we, we all do. He's personally. Just, he shouldn't. He, he shouldn't have a Twitter account. I've, nope. I've, I've a worked. Lot. Basically, if you if you started wrestling before there was cable, you should not be on Twitter. <laughs> that's, a, that's a discussion for a whole different that's a, day. That's a whole other show. But thank you so much for joining show. us. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com.